Hey, good evening everybody. Welcome, or morning, or afternoon, wherever you're watching this. For me, it's an evening, typically when I'm recording this. The kids are in bed, it's asleep, so i got a few minutes of quiet time since I tend to say good evening a good bit. But anyways, welcome back. Glad you guys uh, came back. If it's your first time here, uh, welcome to uh, the channel. Just showing a little bit of what Foundry VTT can do. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about combat from a uh, showing what a view looks like from uh, the game master, dungeon master, as well as the player viewpoint. So I've got two screens up here, incognito window for the player and then the game master logged in here on this side. You will see this resolution error if you are running a resolution lower than 1366, 768. So a lot of discussion on the Discord and forums about, you know, resolution, laptops, things like that. But, you know, some of that right now, obviously a larger resolution where the game will really shine with all the assets. It's not really designed to scale. It's not really a responsive design. But I've got a, only a 1920 1080p monitor. So we've got them side by side here. So here we go. We're going to log in. So I'm as a player. I'm waiting to hop in the game. It's uh, game time. So we're going to log in. And on first loading in, I'm going to see basically my character, right? So over here on the left, I'm the GM. And this character has been assigned to the to this player, the, uh, the mishmash. And so over here as a player, when I let's click that get rid of it. When I log in, I can see this. Now you notice the game is paused. I highly recommend you do that or if you need to change something. That way players aren't running all over the map and doing stuff and using the mouse arrows, things like that. You 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 can't do anything. But as a player, when you're in, you have a, a couple tools. You can uh, do a measurement control. So if you want to me measure or templates, excuse me, templates, and like if you're casting a spell or something like that, you can you know, play something out there. Hey, I launch a cone of fire or something like that. And then you can delete it. I got a module that does roll dice, so that's up there. Uh, journal notes, if there's any journal notes, etc. But today we're going to be worried about uh, combat action f from a character's perspective. So I'm the DM, so on this side I'm going to go ahead and unpause the game so that the players can continue in their journey. And then we'll go on. So as you're explaining, players are walking back and forth and, uh, you know, just trying to explore and trying to figure out, hey, what's going on? Maybe they see a mysterious room. So they're up here. You, obviously, as the GM, know within this room you've got three gals. And uh, it's going to be a tough fight. Of course, they don't know that. Maybe they don't roll perception, whatever. So they, they come in. But uh, they, if the door is locked as a GM, you can actually control that. But if not, players can open things up. Player comes in, sees that, hey, I've now I've got baddies. If they're not set as invisible, they're obviously going to be visible in the game. So for now, we're going to go ahead and start combat. And this is where a couple ways, you know, as we run it. So from a uh, game master, you can highlight all the tokens. You can right click and click the toggle combat state. Or you can just click each token individually and do the same thing. That window here, the combat tracker, if you right click on the bar, and it took me forever to figure this out, a couple sessions, if you watch my longer uh, Wave Echo Cave <laughs> session, you'll see that all night long I'm trying to click and I didn't realize it was right click. See, I'm a newbie on this just as <laughs> everyone else is. Well, not everyone. So now here, so let's do, I'll show you this aspect. So from a player, I can right click, add myself, um, Actually, maybe I can't add it, so I have to check it out. I've never played as a player, so that might not be doable. So I think it's initiated definitely from the GM's perspective. We're just going to do two here. <clears throat> We're going to do it, and boom. Combat is up. The player sees the ghouls. They can roll initiative from here. As a GM, you can roll it as well. So we're going to roll initiative. He gets a 10. The player gets a 14. And now we're getting ready to start combat. The combat tracker is pretty cool. If you have multiple NPCs, you can click that button to roll. Uh, you can actually create a counter. So let's say you have a split party or a, something else happens. You could actually create multiple counters. I have not played with this, done it in reality, but really cool opportunity, really cool features that you can do that. 
then you have uh, some settings here so here's our here's another thing so by default you're gonna see the armor class of I mean, excuse me ugh, initiative of the players of the creatures but maybe you want to track something else maybe their hit points or their armor class you can put that if you know the uh, what the trait is you can actually put that in there and it will display uh, what that is again I have not messed with it but I've seen some videos and some other folks doing it in the tutorials on the foundry site definitely pretty cool you can skip defeated enemies if that is a choice you, you want to do, either manually skip them or whatever. You can make enemies invisible or folks invisible. So if, let's say, if things get uh, super busy or you want to make invisible on the combat tracker, there we go. You notice on the player side over here, that one disappeared, uh, but they're still out there. Again, defeated. You can mark one as defeated. They say, hey, this, this ghoul was taken out. We got a little uh, defeated icon that hovers over it. Of course, you can make it disappear out of the combat tracker and everything. But uh, we're going to go ahead because you see the line here on this side because the player already uh, rolled uh, initiative, so they're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and begin combat. It is the player's turn. And here we have the ability to go to the next turn. We also have the ability to go to the next round. So in D&D 5e, each turn is a roughly six seconds and, you know, however. So as a player, from a uh, viewpoint, from a combat viewpoint, you know, you have a couple options. You can, you know, figure out, you can click the measure icon. So if you're trying to measure something out, where you want to go, uh, you have the ability, if you hit the, on Windows, the control uh, button, and then hit the space bar, your character will move in that area. So that is uh, an option there for movement if you want to kind of plot some waypoints. The You might want to use the targeting icon. So if there's a lot of creatures going on and you're like, hey, I'm going to target that creature. Well, I've got the pings module, so I can ping and say I'm going to target that one. But there's also the targeting uh, aspect here, which lets you target each individual or whatever creature you're aiming for so in this and you notice from a GM's perspective you see the color that represents what that player is this player me is purple they have targeted uh, well this one they've targeted this one so it shows up purple so as players communicate or you can see who's targeting who what's going on other than that it doesn't do a whole lot I don't think right now it doesn't affect you know hit points or targets or things like that so as combat starts couple things you can do as a player <clears throat> obviously you can open up your character sheet you can click on you know hey I'm going to click my attack and you know see what happens right away let's move some things over here and you can kind of see hey here's what happened another really super cool thing with foundry is like you know what I instead of open my character sheet all the time let's drag these to my action bar as a player, you're probably only going to be running one character. So maybe you want to just add these to your um, action bar, macro bar, and be able to just click it without opening up your uh, character sheet. Really cool feature. By the way, these uh, Mystery Man icons are for any abilities and things that do not have a default icon in the system, you know, through the SRD. So you can always add these or use modules that will kind of pre-populate and give you your own icons. But let's say, for instance, in here, he's going to go back and uh, he's going to target this guy. As we said, we're going to do a, uh, you know, he's going to move forward. So you can use your arrow keys. To, oops, sorry. I was targeting myself. You probably don't want to do that. So let's uh, let's deselect myself and let's move forward. And he's going to target him just to let everybody know that, hey, I'm targeting this guy. So now we're going to run combat. We're going to hit a one. And maybe we had an advantage of it or disadvantage or whatever. So we hit the, we hit the creature. When you click on it, you'll see some of the breakdown of the D20 plus any abilities, any modifiers, what the role is, same thing with the damage. A red is a natural one. A green is a natural 20. And then a little bit of information of what's going on. So this does damage and piercing. And then you as the GM, you could now say, all right, he did three points of, points of damage. So here's the bar there. So we'll just hit minus three. 
and immediately right there you see my hover it's down the player does not see that that's up to you as a GM to tell that story of how the creature is being beat down and how you know aggressive they are and, and things like that and that's it for from a player perspective on combat so if, once they're done they can hit end turn themselves and or the GM can do that it depends on you know how good your players are if they're new at this so I'm a player so I'm gonna hit end turn my turns over it goes to the next uh, one in the initiative round so it's the uh, ghouls turn here he doesn't like getting stabbed in the back so he's going to target this guy and you of course you as a GM you can use the targeting tool as well but not not necessary but you can just uh, highlight say hey I'm going to attack that creature and for this because you know maybe I just want to add this to my macro bar we're gonna do a bite and claws and again, like we had mentioned before, you can have multiples of these. So if you have certain pre-encounters, you can already have certain things in here. So he's going to hit bite. It shows up here in the player's chat window. It'll show up on the GM's chat window as well. We'll zoom out here a little bit so we can see what's going on. Scroll to the bottom. He did bite and did seven piercing damage. Now as the GM, you can apply that you know to the player itself you know you have the ability to handle all that the player can also apply that to themselves say alright I took seven points of damage and now we're you know, showing he's hurt again the other players might not be able to see the attribute bar there just depends on you know what permissions that you give to them from a GM perspective and then uh, once that turn is over we go to the next turn then we go back to round two so it's really great you know somebody cast sleep right sleep lasts for one minute and you have a long combat encounter and you're like you know in the pen and paper days we're writing down like all right is this round number five or six here kind of keeps track of that you're at round two so you know around 10 creature that was asleep is now awake another cool thing is the ability to add uh, conditions right so we have this on roll 20 and some others so is this a sign status effect so maybe this creature is asleep so we'll just put in a little sleep icon here it'll show up in the combat tracker it'll also show up on the screen as well as the player sees hey that person is asleep or disabled or something you know to that effect from a um, player's perspective, they can also probably assign, say, hey, you know, maybe I've been webbed, or the DM says, hey, apply poison damage, or, or you know, or whatever. There's a more of a better sleep one or something like that. You know, they can do that themselves just to kind of keep track. The uh, That's the targeting icon, so you can use this one up here. You can also use this. This box right here is an elevation box. So if you got certain games, flying creatures, and you're keeping track of elevation, uh, you would use this box for it. Uh, status effects, you know, again, what we just mentioned. So let's say fight back and forth. The uh, ghoul eventually gets defeated. So we're going to mark him as defeated, and then combat is over. You just, as a DM, you just hit end combat, and it clears everything out. Close the window, and uh, you're going back to the back to normal close out there and we're all back to normal continuing on continuing on on the adventure so uh, just a, a quick highlight of showing how combat works from a player perspective and what the GM can view as well and that is it so I uh, hope that was helpful for you guys as you try to figure out uh, I do definitely recommend as you're building out adventures uh, GM's that you create a test character like this you go in there play around again it's it's the best way to learn how the system works is by you know clicking on things and setting up an incognito window like this and running combat and just you know seeing how they go back and forth so you can kind of get an idea get getting the flow of it and as well as checking out videos and things online but that's it hope it's uh, helpful for you guys again have fun adventuring and we'll talk to you later